Hello drone racers, the Cotton Candy Quad is back. This is the B-Fight 210 and I got the part that I needed to get it fixed. If you didn't see my last review, I went through a whole review and got about 30 seconds worth of flight on it before I broke it. Mainly because the antenna was sticking up and was just too long that it came with. So I have bought a new module here that plugs in right here and then it mounts. So this was already set and ready to go on the frame. I have been told the new ones actually come with this cable so you can mount this this way because apparently I'm not the only one who broke it. So one of the things I'm gonna test is the VTX, but another thing I'm gonna do is actually update this to Betaflight 321 because this does not come with a buzzer. So I'm gonna set this up so I can fly it with a buzzer. Now what made me decide to review this all of a sudden? Right now, today, you can get the version with a FreeSky receiver for $99.99. Like, yeah, if, if you are watching this and you are looking for a drone, just stop and just go get this one. Because for $99.99, this is probably the best deal you can possibly get right now. So the first thing I've got to do in order to update Betaflight on it though is take these props off because these would be a total hazard updating with them on. So we'll be right back. Props are off, we're in Betaflight. I've confirmed the version, it's 317, which until a few months ago was the greatest you could get, but now it's not. Now 3.2 is out and everything is better on 3.2, so that's what we're gonna fly. I'm not gonna go through the process of updating it in this video. I'll link up in the corner. I actually have a good video that I've gone through updating the process on an omnibus. So they're all gonna be pretty much the same. In this case though, for this, it is an omnibus. It's not an F4, it's not an SD or any of those others. It's just an omnibus. So that's the thing you need to know. Make sure you select. So I'm gonna go through the update of Betaflight and then I'll update the motors in BL Heli and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're all updated and here's where we stand. A few things that I ran into, I typed DFU to boot in the DFU mode and it didn't work. Well, it worked, but then it, it didn't load and then it wouldn't let me can access the flight controller at all. And it looked like it was gonna be a disaster. I was gonna take it apart and find the boot pads. Thankfully, the B fight is the easiest boot button I've ever had. Look at this. See this gold button right here? That is a bootloader button and it's very easy to access and you just hold that down and plug in the USB. I actually plug in the other side because it's easier and it boots in a DFU mode. I did that and then it proceeded just like normal. So that made everything work just fine. I found a ratty old antenna to connect to it to make sure I didn't burn up the VTX while I had the battery connected. So I booted it up. I had to use the old version of BL Heli, the standalone version. So I'll show you my settings real fast. I am in UART 3, that is the default here. And all this, you can see it's the same thing from uh, the previous video, which has been linked up at the beginning. But here's DSHOT 600. I turn on motor stop because that's how I roll. I named it, I'm on 8,000, 2,000. Everything here is the default, except I turn on anti-gravity and dynamic filters because dynamic filters are magic. Power and battery, I adjusted even though I don't have a buzzer on here to 3133. PID tuning, I did go ahead and turn on PT1 and turned off the filters, so I will be very careful the first flight, but if we burst into flames, hey, that'll be awesome. But as usual, if you do this yourself, do these one step at a time, turn on PT1, test it, turn off the filter, test it. By test that I mean fly it around for about 30 seconds and see if the motors are hot. Do that with each one of these until you get these all turned off and see what happens. I'm gonna be flying tomorrow. It's gonna to be 28 degrees outside, so I doubt the motors are gonna get very hot. Receiver is all set up and ready to go. Modes, my standard aux one is on a switch, angle horizon on the beginning and end, whether that'll make acro on the uh, far end of the switch. My beeper, I'll get to in just a second. And Air mode is also on aux 2, so it works on horizon and acro mode. So the beeper did not work because there's no beeper installed in here, but this is one of the reasons I went to Betaflight 3.2. Now this happens. So that's good enough for me to find it. By default, that is disabled, so you have to go and enable it. So I'll show you real quick the command to do that. You have to go into the command line. There's no switch for it yet. I bet there will be one soon. So then in the command line, you type, and I'll probably get this wrong the first time, set buzzer D shot beacon tone. No, set beeper D shot beacon tone. There we go. So it defaults to zero, which is off, and it goes all the way up to five. I'll show you real quick here. Uh, see, that's one. And if I set it to five and save, we'll see how much of a difference that makes. Ooh, yeah, it's definitely louder. It's a higher tone though. 
not necessarily louder, it's just a higher tone. So it's a little louder, but I like one because there is a chance you could burn up your motors if you do this for too long. So when you're looking for it, don't leave that on. Just enable it, get closer to it, turn it on until you, you find it, but don't leave it running constantly. So now though, I'm gonna set that back to one. I'm gonna put the props on it and wait until morning and go fly it at that point. Be prepared for me to whine about the cold. For the record, it is a brisk 23 degrees out here right now. And I did just a little bitty test flight to make sure everything was good. Definitely needs more camera angle. And uh, after my little test flight of about a minute, I had absolutely no warmth to the motors. Imagine that, they were bone cold. So uh, this is the longest flight I've ever had with this. It flies pretty smooth. Really, uh, for <laughs> For $99, what I don't care for usually are these props. These props, you can see, are eating into this pretty hard. Don't go to the pond. Yeah, but oh man, it's nice. It is nice. I don't like having to use full throttle, but having it available when I want it. And you know what? Normally, I'm going to say I actually don't mind these props. I brought another set to try but I don't mind them at all. I'm only at half stick right now, which is what I like. Um, depending on the resolution you want, you can use lesser props, but even this, this is not a great battery. Ooh, don't end up there. It's not a great battery, but it's doing a lot better than I expected. Uh, it's a 1300 China Hobby Line, so not a great one at all. I'm gonna come back and put a better battery on it, and uh, I'm gonna try some different props just to see how it goes, but I don't, I'm gonna say I don't mind the cat and candy too much. Not too bad. Okay, now I have some Racer Star uh, 5048s on here. And yeah, I like that better. Um, now at cruise speed, which I've also increased the camera angle, I'm at about three quarter throttle, which I like a little better. Gives me a little more playroom, although it uh, still seems to be hurting the batteries quite a bit but it makes it nice and smooth. Gives me a little more throttle resolution. These might not be as quite efficient or this battery might not be quite as charged. Do not end up in the pond. Oh man, it's so smooth. So like I mentioned though, the big deal about this thing right now, $99. It's just an absolute steal. And why am I staying over here? There are definitely no golfers today. I have free reign of the course. But I also have a low battery. So yeah, now that I get to fly this thing, it's light. It's really light. And that makes it nice. But it still uh, still performs pretty well as an acrobat. So it's, I would say it is a great all-around machine. I am very happy with it. Very, very happy with it. The only thing I didn't like was the antenna didn't work. I do have one more test, though. One more very important test I didn't get around to last time that I really need to try this time. Let's see how that does. So yeah, 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 it flies great and it's probably the best deal you can get right now for $99. It's an absolute steal. If you can't get that, I'm sorry if it's too late. I'm sorry, but man, you missed it. It was awesome. Still, even at the regular price of 130 bucks, it's pretty darn good. But if you saw my last review of it, I had an idea and I forgot to test it. So I'm gonna test it now. This might be the most important thing because what do you do at the end of a flying day? You can't do it before. You can't do it during, but after you're done flying, you need to crack open a cold one. But what happens if you forget your bottle opener? See that? Yeah, I think that'll work. I think I'm gonna have to tilt the camera down just a little bit. And I have a uh, pale ale here that I, I, IPAs are nasty. So this is not something I'm gonna drink. So we're gonna see here. Actually it works better with the camera up. So there, we can get that in there. And, oh, is it not gonna work? Ah, oh, so it doesn't work. It's just chipping the carbon away. So I guess if you're gonna buy one of these, you should buy it to fly and not as a $99 bottle opener. You'd think these manufacturers could plan ahead a little better. If this was just a little bit bigger, it would work just fine. I mean, come on, look at that. Look at that right there. Come on, nope. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below with which frame do you think would make the best bottle opener. But until next time, remember, Give me a good Kentucky bourbon ale or an authentic German Weisse beer.
Now we're talking. 